so welcome everyone this is the release presentation for curl 8.7.1 actually even though the image up here says 870 and i'll get to why and a little bit about that in a second so i just wanted to explain that i am of course daniel stenberg i I lead the curl project. I work on curl. Uh, this is how my workplace look, looks like. And um, that's my Mastodon account. That's my website. I work from Wolf SSL. I do curl support. Today, I'm going to do a curl release presentation in the same style I'll, I tend to do them. First, some release uh, numbers and stuff, security things, changes bug fixes, removals, coming removals, and maybe something might, what might come next. And today, you know, I, I'm, I'm talking about this 870, 871 uh, release. This has two of them, but uh, they're pretty much one. Uh, but, uh, so it happened because I did a 870 release this morning, my time. 748 roughly uh, and then it took a 40 minutes something until someone found out that one of the files in the tarball that i put together in the release was broken so i immediately decided i would do a dot one release which then basically just fixed the tarball so there all all the source code is actually identical in the two releases i just fixed the, the because the source code in the tarball is actually generated so it's generated just correctly in the follow-up release therefore i talk about them as one release here oh, even though there are actually two but mm, you, just forget about the dot zero go with the dot one and we everyone will be happy so this time around it took 56 days and we had 92 contributors this time that helped out contributed assisted which means that they, they were actually 56 new ones uh, a lot of people have done 37 were authors that contributed or wrote code that we merged into the git uh, source code repository 1252 authors in total a lot of people so yes this was a complete release cycle until we did this release which means that we have been working on curl for 9,500 days under the name curl. We started before, so it's actually more in total. <clears throat> so today I wanted to mention or specifically highlight four security advisories that we are announcing in association with, with this release, these releases today. And um, as always, I recommend you go and read all the details from our site, our details, our explanations and, and the resources we provide, because if you read up on these CVs elsewhere, they are often not as complete or um, detailed. First one is the CV 2024-2004. It's a um, funny thing. It is actually it's a way that you can disable protocols you can or enable you, there's an option in curl that you when you can say only allow these protocols and don't allow any others and we messed up which made you well made it possible to sort of provide a confusing set of options of what protocols to allow so don't allow anything and it would accidentally still allow protocols so basically even though you would disallow protocols it would still allow them in a sneaky way read up the the complete explanation if you if you're using one this feature then Fandish found it uh, is a low severity we consider it because it's still you need to provide it in a pretty weird um, illogical uh, um, sort of way <clears throat> still shouldn't do that another one th this one is a memory leak it requires a malicious http2 server and an application that wants to do uh, server push a rare combination http2 is server push and a malicious server but if you would do that and, and the application could then well the server could then just provide a lot of headers and that and when you, and when the, the push headers in in this push request and when the amount of headers 
uh, reach the too many the limit, which is a thousand. Uh, curl would sort of abort that server push, but it would not free all the headers correctly. So, and the application actually doesn't even notice that this happens because the the push is uh, aborted and and just ignored. But curl will leak memory, and this can actually then leak memory up to megabytes per request. So we it can potentially be a problem for you and for an application we call it severe to medium just because of that but it's still a rare combination of, of uh, requirements to happen so found by w <laughs> w zero x42 um i don't think has they don't have a real name <clears throat> uh, the third issue another one that is that requires a set of very specific circumstances. So uh, curl could actually accidentally avoid the certificate check uh, when doing quick connections built to, uh, built with WolfSSL. Uh, so, you know, HTTP3 uses quick and not TCP and TLS. So when you, you would do HTTP3 with curl, with curl built uh, with WolfSSL, it could actually accidentally uh, bypass the certificate check, but only if WolfSSL was built with a particular build option, which was not recommended, and only if you would ask for another thing <laughs> in combination that caused a failure uh, earlier in, in the process. So read up on this if you use Quick and WolfSSL in combination with curl. Uh, it should be really rare to actually hit anyone. But that's why we call it severity low. Dexter Gehrig found it. CVE 2024-2379. Um, great find, but very specific. Uh, another uh, certificate bypass, this time with the embed TLS backend. So this is for regular TLS connections. So if you build curl with embed TLS and you tell curl to use a IP address in the URL, curl would actually not check the certificate correctly, or it would actually not tell embed TLS to check the certificate, so it would just allow it through. Um, this is, uh, this was found by Frank Yu, or sorry for pronunciation of, of your name, but um, it has, is actually a regression because we, had almost the identical security problem, I think, is in 2016. So we brought it back. Uh, silly. I blame partly the the API in embed TLS. But also interesting, by the way, is a lot of embed TLS versions, unless you go with the most recent ones, uh, they don't support uh, HTTPS to a. They don't support certificate checks of IP addresses. Um, so when this fixed, your transfer likely fails unless you have a very recent embed TLS version. So those were four CVEs we announced in, in association with this release. Low, low, medium, medium. You should really look them up and read about the details um, to learn if you're, uh, if you're in a vulnerable position. <clears throat> and we also added a few new things in this release so we uh, have a few changes or features or whatever and we depending on how you count i say five maybe they're actually just four but anyway i'm listing five bullet points because it's fun to list bullet points so first of all we added a disable docs uh, option in to configure so now you can actually build curl will and asking curl to not render the documentation uh, this has become slightly more interesting because we now render documentations uh, documentation in a different way than we so we in the past we didn't and so we, now we do so you can actually you know get the build process a little bit faster by not doing this you may also if you disable building docs you may want to disable the manual so so that the curl command line tool works and so that you can build it because it needs the dock to build anyway you figure that out 
we introduced a new info variable we, you know we have a lot of info variables basically ways for an application to query state or information about the past transfer so when the transfer is done ask libcurl about details from the previous transfer and this is a new one did curl use a proxy in the previous transfer or not and you may wonder why that is interesting but but it is in sometimes for example you can set up a filter so don't use a proxy for these particular set of domains and uh, then when you do a transfer a, an application might not even notice or actually keep track of if if that url it used actually matched one of those sort of exclusions or not and now you can ask libcurl did it use the proxy or not and we can also do the exact same thing uh, from the curl tool then so ask curl the curl tool did you use a proxy in the previous transfer it's just a boolean yes no zero or one basically we support now support a um, this short 512 and 256 for doing digest authentication i uh, it is used for atp and it's also for smtp i believe i'm a little bit read up on it um and we have added doe trace configuration um so if you do doe the dns over https you now can specify with the trace the, the standard trace option for curls to say i want to have doe trace uh, output which then sends a lot of doe data doe traffic information and uh, over the regular uh, verbose logging helps you debug um, and uh, work out why do things work or doesn't work or whatever you want to figure out in, in your do traffic when you use curl and <clears throat> those are pretty much the, the changes in this release we have done a lot of bug fixes of course i my script counts 162 bug fixes a lot of those of course very minor maybe you don't even care about them and a bunch of them are documentation uh, updates and uh, things may be irrelevant to you but i have i, I go through and dig out the best ones or maybe the noteworthy ones or some of my favorites and then this time around i think i found 22 of them that i'm going to mention here for you today just maybe interesting to you for you you go read the full change log if you want to get everything so we fixed configure the configure script in, in several ways this time we for example now allow the libpsl library to be get found be found get found be found get found by with the, the pk pkg config package config script instead of just uh, trying to figure it out without package config which is a bit of an error prone and we also got the rustles found with package config this just makes it easier to build libcurl curl with uh, these libraries installed on different distros and in and, and customized surroundings in every way um, and we also now have a warning output in the end of the configure run if you're configuring curl to use a tls library with which curl doesn't support tls 1.3 tls 1.3 was i mean the specification was shipped in 2018 that's roughly six, well coming soon it's going to be six years so going now with a tls library building curl with a tls library without tls uh, 1.3 support it might be a sign uh, of you going with something maybe a little bit too legacy for you it's just an information it doesn't change anything it just hey you're doing this just be aware <clears throat> other http related things that we've fixed um i wanted to just mention that if i mentioned the lib psl library just for the configure psl is stands for public suffix list is for uh, keeping track of public suffixes uh, domain names and if that manner sort of the check if the psl check fails at runtime now curl will reject the cookie instead of just silently ignore the error um, Typically, uh, this shouldn't fail at runtime at all because it should have a backup and uh, built in uh, PSL database, but it can, depending on how you build the lib PSL, it can actually fail at runtime if it fails to look, if it doesn't have a built in 
database and it fails to load it from disk, it can fail. But now then curl will reject the cookie. So if this happens, it will reject most cookies, right? Uh, so be aware. <coughs> it should be very rare for users for, to, uh, to experience this anyway. We now have a better error message for HTTP 1. Basically, when you have had a communication with an, a server so that we know it is an HTTP 1 server, but and then if it then returns a response without the status line, we have a much better error message. Previously, it was a little bit confusing because it was it would claim that it was a HTTP 0 0.9 response, even though it clearly could not have been. Um, a sort of silly regression in the previous version made curl actually output an error if there was a response body in a head response. And of course, it's debatable if that is an error or not, because according to the spec, uh, an, a head request should never have a response body, but curl has never previously been reporting any errors for this situation. And so we shouldn't introduce an error for that. And now it's not an error uh, again, back like it, how it always worked. Not exactly HTTP related, more HTTP or more TLS related actually. <clears throat> when you connect did with curl to an HTTPS proxy, and maybe you would do HTTPS over an HTTPS proxy, so you know two layers of, of TLS, and you would do uh, IP, you would connect to one IP address to the to the proxy and to another IP address to the server, and they would do different versions. So one IPv6, IPv4 uh, to the to one of them, and the other version to the other. Curl would mix up which, uh, so it would check the HTTPS proxy using the wrong uh, IP version. Damn. Complicated, confusing, but we fixed it. Library related things that we fixed. Uh, I have a few of them. For example, the file transfers are now faster again. Um, I don't know if you remember, but we have changed the libcurl internals to use what we call the transfer buffer. So there's only a single transfer buffer, no matter how many parallel transfers we are doing, which is a huge gain. I mean, we gain a lot of memory because you can basically do any amount of, of transfers and still just using one buffer instead of having one per transfer that we did in the past. But in that transition, we actually removed the use of that buffer in the file transfer. And now we're going back pretty much to making sure that file also uses that file transfer. So that, that file transfer buffer, which makes them faster generally than previously for a short while. We fixed mprint the, the internal printf uh, function to, to work better with the i32, i64 windows uh, magic things, you know, how to specify larger integer types on, on windows. We had a regression for start TLS for SMTP fixed. <clears throat> there was a report on an integer overflow. This was actually reported as a, a possible security vulnerability, but it really was not a security vulnerability, but it was a, um, so we have this parser for 64-bit numbers, four platforms that don't have their own 64-bit parsers. I don't even know what platforms they are anymore. I, I'm not even sure they actually still exist that anyone builds curl for, but anyway, so if you don't have a native stir to a, a function or uh, equivalent on other platforms, Curl has its own 64-bit um, parser, and it actually did the integer overflow check wrongly. It would actually depend on an, an undefined behavior. Uh, <clears throat> so it could actually end up with the wrong number if it sort of, you know, if everything was, if, if the stars were aligned badly and you had a bad day and uh, yeah, and you were really unlucky. <clears throat> Probably never affected anyone, but we fixed it. We fixed, um, this is one of the things that is going a little bit back and forth over, over the years, but over the releases even, we fixed a little thing. So then we, we break a receive loop differently to make sure that, so if you said a, if you put a cap on the transfer speeds that you allow curl to do, you know, I just want this transfer to use uh, or, 
get transferred at, at the maximum speed for example you know 100k per second not more uh, <clears throat> by doing so we that's sort of you know it's that's not that's a tough thing to do and it's not really an exact science either so 100k per second yeah roughly more or less and how often do you check how do you actually accomplish that uh, and if we stick stuck in this loop for too much we would you know go up to 140 and then button down to 70 maybe or 120 or 80 or 110 or 90 blah 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 so it wouldn't it wouldn't be very exact by so now we've go, gone back to polishing this a little bit more so that we are more sticking to the limit closer and we're more exact in, in following that this side transfer speed <clears throat> we did some tls related stuff um, we have worked on making sure that we only do um, tls shutdown uh, if the pair didn't already do it in an effort to try to reduce the number of tcp resets we got which we apparently got a little bit too many i still i think we have a little bit more to work on there but <clears throat> anyway we have adaptations in the code at, in, in particular now in the quick related things that are using tls that are working with the the suggested proposed coming uh, OpenSSL 3.3 release which is due to ship in I think they plan to do it in April at some point, April 2024, so next month. Uh, and they introduce new API uh, features and mechanisms that will make curl do quick better, or I would say good, perhaps uh, less bad, uh, with OpenSSL. So we will then do much better quick. So HP3 using OpenSSL will be more viable. I'll get back to that in a second. We got the Russells back and updated to use their latest APIs. They did some changes, renames and everything, introduced some slightly new concepts. So now we work, uh, you can build curl with that uh, uh, after that API bump. And we also fixed S channel flaws like this uh, and hang on an unexpected server close. <clears throat> curl command line tool wise, of course, we did a lot of things. Uh, I think it's maybe eight, nine, ten things here. So, for example, <laughs> kind of interesting. So, if you do a uh, post with curl and you do this uh, curl at a file name, it will read the file, right, and, and post it. And the documentation says it will strip out all new character returns and new lines from the file. Um, that's basically just a feature so that you can split up the file in multiple lines, but when you send it, it will just ignore the line, the new lines and character returns. But it turns out that it was flawed. So if you only included carriage returns in the file, they were not ignored correctly. They are now. Uh, I made uh, we made sure that the, the parsing of e tags and, and the content disposition headers are only done for two XX response codes in HP because otherwise why would you uh, care about them uh, <clears throat> a regression made us not support a blank string or an empty string for the dash minus w option uh, just a mistake so um, we fixed that and uh, I in, in a previous release I think it was 860 I rewrote the command line parser and made it much faster but in that process i also introduced the regression when you would try to use weird short options i call them out of range basically um, very low ascii numbers or whatever crazy things you could do on a, on, on a command line they could then uh, cause a read out of the uh, i mean they could basically crash the curl command line too and other things uh, for the still curl command line tool thing. So if you're doing a retry and you get a retry after a response header back from the server, now we have a different precedence. So we will actually acknowledge and use the header from the server as prefer, prefer that time rather than the time it would other use otherwise use because that's now deemed to be more important or better time to use. 
may be interesting to quite a few users now curl will exit on config file parser errors so if you tell curl to read a config file basically what you do with the dash capital k option it will error out and exit if there's a parser error because it's weird not to so it previously would try to continue but that could also lead uh, to a weird state because uh, if there's a parsing error what did the user actually mean so now it doesn't continue anymore it, it will error out i've been working on I call this bullet point shorter help text and then shorter dash dash help. That is um, when you do curl dash dash help or dash dash help all and, and list all the options in your terminal. The, they are now shorter, but the primary point with that is not that they are shorter, but they are actually, they look nicer. It, you get a better columns and, and they look much better and calmer on the eyes and everything. We have some more slight polish on that coming up. Another very minor thing is that I fixed the dash dash lib curl output better for this these options. If you ask lib, you know, if you're using a curl command line and you say I want to use these specific uh, TLS versions, it would then of course and you use dash dash lib curl. Dash dash lib curl of course is this awesome option that everyone should know about. It generates a lib curl source code for you and shows how to use lib curl to do the same thing as you do in the command line. But it would do it would use this these options both the, the curl opt SSL version and the proxy SSL version. It would uh, actually not do them optimally because of a mistake. And now it uh, makes uh, them nicer in the lib curl source output that it generates. <clears throat> Those were basically the the I would say maybe the most interesting or. Uh, fascinating or challenging bug fixes we're going to remove a few things coming forward just wanted to mention that we are going to remove the htlm wb support in june coming up soon so maybe not in the next release but in the next next that's going to be gone it actually doesn't work right now in the code so you have to fix it yourself in the code if you want it to work right now and Basically, nobody is telling us about it. So I guess very few people are actually using this. So it's not going to actually hurt anyone. Um, we are also going to remove the support for space separated patterns in the no proxy options in July. Basically, you have to use comma separated options. So if you use no proxy, separate your patterns with a comma and you'll be fine that is actually how it is documented that is how other tools are doing it that is sort of a it's not a standard it's more of a de facto standard agreement among tools and browsers and whatnot uh, but it's this is our way to sort of go to more consistent uh, treatment of the no proxy environment variables and uh, options okay so the next release is likely to become 8.8.0 .8 because we have changes that we want to do and um, most likely we will do that <laughs> and some of the things that we are working on that we have pull requests for pending stuff intentions to work on um, include the following i'm not saying that these will be in the next release but they might be in the next or coming releases or maybe we will not have them ech the encrypted client hello we've been talking about this talking about this before it's still pending still coming uh, it is something that is going to happen on the internet widely so i think curl needs to support it going forward we have a pull request so in the works it is coming at some point we have a pull request coming for file colon directory listings. Basically, if you if you ask curl to do a file, you use a file colon URL. You can with this you can do a directory listing if the target is a directory or a, yeah, possibly if it ends with a slash as well. I guess we haven't really worked out the details yet, but uh, it is work that is coming we have this negative dns caching pull request i hope we will get that landed soon to basically if curl a request or tries to resolve a dns host name 
it, it will cache the negative result for a while and not just currently it only caches positive results basically if you're then repeating the a bad host name it will try to resolve it many many times not with this um, pull request uh, i hope maybe there's a chance that we can go uh, non-experimental with doing uh, http3 and quick with the open ssl uh, back end uh, this is a little bit of a gamble but we'll see it might happen depending on exactly how it works with OpenSSL's new 3.3 release coming it could happen we have a new proposed function called a new api at, um, called curl multi weight fds as in file descriptors it's just a way to extract file descriptors from the current multi handle so that you can pretty much do uh, poll on them yourself on, on all the file handles that curl is waiting for the, we already had this the corresponding function to get um, it called get fds right uh, the file descriptors to do a select on the file descriptors but if you rather want to do poll there actually haven't been any such a function and this is a proposal how to do it it is fairly small straightforward and easy so i i think we will merge that pull request so those are five things that we might do for the next release and of course whatever you want to do and you want to work on uh, and if you want to see any of these ones uh, just join the pull request join the discussions and say what you want um, the next one then 8.8.0 possibly will uh, ideally then get shipped on may 22nd which is happens to be exactly 56 days from today right eight weeks and we have the pending release notes always on this uh, url we have the eight week release cycles that's why it's uh, 56 days right so today is release wednesday there's a 10 day cool down period uh, with sort of stable uh, make sure that we don't merge any breaking things so if anyone reports any major problem we can do another patch release and then there's a Saturday in 10 days, and then we have a 21 days feature window, then we freeze on the Saturday, and then we have a feature freeze, and then we do the release again. So today is March 27. On April 6, we open the feature window. April 27, we close it again. And on May 22nd, we, we um, what do we do? We do the next release. Yes. I want to mention highlight that i do curl support for uh, you and your companies get in touch if whatever problems or issues features changes help you need when it comes to curl um, if you find bugs you of course submit them in the curl bug tracker on this uh, address or if you find a security related issue that you suspect um, go to hackerone.com slash curl and submit it and we will deal with it appropriately of course we don't announce it publicly until we have figured out fixed it and we can uh, announce a release fix <clears throat> these are the official top sponsors of march 2024 brand new this time around i've dropped all the silver sponsors because there are too many and they change all the time so i just wanted to emphasize these are the top sponsors these are the big sponsors we have in the project uh, Wolf SSL, Fastly, TeamViewer, Kira, Elastic, and Hacks, and uh, they are fundamental and, and uh, make sure that we can ship curl the way we do. I want to especially highlight this time that we're doing a curl up. This is our annual uh, curl conference. We're doing it in Stockholm this time in 2024. Google curl up 2024. Go to this website and read about, up about it. You can be part of that too. Uh, just register ahead of time it's at no cost and that is what i wanted to say this is curl and you find all the curl details on the curl website of course um, uh, yep, that's about it thank you for watching see you in the in the next release all right